All right, got my water, got my notes, got my pregnant belly. Let's do this, friends. Okay, hey guys, Amy Esther here. Welcome, welcome back to my channel. If you have not been here before, well, let me just introduce myself. I have several chronic illnesses, including POTS, postural orthostatic tachycardia syndrome, and I'm currently 25 weeks pregnant, well into my second trimester, getting close to the third trimester, only a couple more weeks. And I wanted to share with you guys today about the second trimester and POTS. I did one on my first trimester and I'll do one more on my third trimester. I get a lot of questions about being pregnant with POTS. So I wanted to share with you guys as much in the moment detail as I can. I thought about making these videos at the end, maybe just like an end after I finished my pregnancy, how my pregnancy went, but I felt like doing it each trimester would be a little more beneficial because then I'm in the midst of it and I don't have to forget anything because I'm very forgetful because, you know, brain fog, POTS, and so we are in the second trimester. So today's video is the second trimester of pregnancy with postural orthostatic tachycardia syndrome. And if you have POTS, you definitely wanna be subscribed to my channel, especially if you wanna have a baby because I make videos three times a week about life with POTS and other chronic illnesses and how to be a mama, how to be a pregnant mama. I have a toddler as well that I chase after all the time. I'm sick every single day and I'm pregnant and I'm the happiest I've ever been in my life. So, so happy, even though I'm always sick. And that's why I created this channel because I have so many people that I talk to who are suffering like I was a few years ago because you're living with chronic illness and you're living with POTS and you wanna do things with your life. You wanna be a mom. You just wanna do things. And that's why I created this channel, to give you hope that you can get there. So if you are wanting to get pregnant, if you are pregnant, maybe you're in the first trimester and you're scared about the second trimester, how it's gonna get, I wanted to create this video for you to help you to feel like you can do it. If I can do it, I'm a wimp. I can do it, you can do it. So. Anyway, that was kind of a long intro, but welcome to my channel if you're new. And don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already and follow along on Instagram if you want the day-to-day -day updates of pregnancy and life with chronic illness. But let's talk about the second trimester. So you guys saw my first trimester with POTS. Oh, one more thing. Sorry, you guys. I thought of something else. If you want the weekly updates, I do do it up. Do do. Hilarious. I do an update every single Friday of my pregnancy. So if you're watching this in real time, you'll see my pregnancy updates from uh, four to 24 um, up on my channel. But if you're watching this in the future, my whole pregnancy playlist will be done. I mean, eventually, once I have this baby. So I will link in the description, whether you're watching this in real time or in the future, the up-to-date um, pregnancy playlist so you can watch every week I talk about all the things that happened that week how I'm doing and you can see the weekly updates and then I'm doing these once a month that are just specific to pop so that videos about my whole life everything that's going on pregnancy wise each week and then these videos are just about pots so again a long intro guys but if you want to watch my pregnancy playlist where I tell you each and every week of my pregnancy that is linked in the description below all right, let's get on with the video. So if you watched my trimester one video or any of my pregnancy updates in trimester one, you know it was not easy, but it wasn't as much POTS related things. So I felt like I was very fatigued that trimester, but like POTS related stuff didn't necessarily get worse during the first trimester. Um, or get better. I just felt like I was kind of coasting pots wise, but then I had a lot of extra fatigue. I was anemic and I was just having, I was having a lot of fatigue that first trimester um, where it was hard to do anything. Um, but pots wise, I, nothing really changed that much. Um, this trimester has definitely changed a little bit more. Um, so one thing, probably the biggest thing that has happened, we'll just start with the big, the big thing that has happened from POTS this trimester is my blood pressure has been low. So when I went to the doctor, 
um, pretty soon after I started my second trimester, my doctor said my blood pressure was, I don't remember what it was, but it was like something, it was under 90 over 50. It was a little bit under that. Um, and he told me that if it continues to stay that low, we needed to monitor me and maybe get me on some blood pressure medication. So he asked me to check it multiple times a day, especially, I can feel it now. Like I know what it feels like to have my to have low blood pressure because I've been checking it so often um, that usually I can say like, oh, my blood pressure's low and I'll check it and it will be low. <laughs> um, but that's something that he recommended that I do is I check my blood pressure very regularly. So some of the things I feel when I, my blood pressure's low is I'll get really dizzy, kind of classic POTS symptoms. I'll get dizzy, headachey, fatigue, those kind of things. And I just, I feel almost a little shaky just kind of weird and um and so at that point i know that my blood pressure is getting low and i'll check it see where it's at he had told me that if it's under 90 over 50 consistently so like if i check it you know for four days in a row and it stays 90 over 50 or even just a couple days in a row then to call and get things checked out but it's always kind of hovering it's just like sometimes a little bit under there sometimes a little bit over but it's almost always around like 92 over 52 like it's just like staying low but not too low does that make sense so i had gone to a different doctor for a different thing because you know chronic illnesses and she tested my blood pressure and i i told her it might be kind of low and she's like yep it's it was the same thing. It was around 92 over 52. Like that's kind of like <laughs> where it's staying. It's just like barely over that line that my doctor told me was kind of the danger line, right? So basically my blood pressure has been really low, but not too concerningly low basically is where we're at. Um, so that's been the big thing, which is definitely POTS related. He, um, he knows a lot about POTS. So I have a really good OB who he knows about POTS. He's dealt with POTS patients before. And so he just said, yeah, that's because of your POTS. So we're not really too concerned about it. It doesn't affect the baby unless it gets, you know, too low in that way. Um, and then the other thing that I've been checking is my blood glucose. And I don't know if this is for my POTS or what, but I have had just like, I, I just have really low blood sugar levels a lot. And so I'll have to make sure I'm eating really regularly. And that more goes with my eating schedule, I think. Um, I check it and I, I kind of know again, like when I'm feeling like my blood sugar's low, I kind of know when that is. And so I'll just check it and I'll have to eat something. Um, I'll have like an apple or whatever to try and get my blood sugar better. So I've been just trying to eat really regularly and not eat too much at once. So I almost just like eat like every hour. I <laughs> just like eat something. And I've been very, I haven't had a big appetite this pregnancy, which is weird. Like I, I eat a lot. I really think I eat a lot and I'm gaining weight. Like I'm not, it's not like I'm underweight or I'm throwing up or anything, but I just like, I almost forget to eat because I don't have a big appetite. So I've gotten a lot better at it as this trimester has progressed. At the beginning of the trimester, I would forget to eat lunch and then by two o'clock I would just be like shaking like crazy and my, my blood sugar would be super super low and felt like I was gonna pass out so that's something that I've been checking a lot more regularly so I highly suggest if you have POTS to check those two things um, if you don't have a glucose checker I mean you can buy one at Walgreens for 40 bucks if you want to or just make sure you're eating really regularly and then I would definitely make sure you have a blood pressure um blood pressure cuff is how they're called and check your blood pressure because people with POTS either have too low blood pressure or too high blood pressure and both of those could be dangerous in pregnancy so that's something you definitely want to check out but for me it's just kind of been more of an annoyance for me um and just kind of like my symptoms have have been a little bit worse because of that and my heart rate still does get really high so i do wear a fitbit all the time that's something else i would recommend if you have pots is to wear some kind of a heart rate monitor that monitors it all the time and my doctor said it's not harmful to the baby if your heart rate gets too high because the baby has their own heart rate um but it can be harmful to you as in make you, you know, feel dizzy. And I guess the only way it's it's harmful to the baby is if you get dizzy and pass out, right? So there have been times where I really thought I was gonna pass out and I'll just immediately sit down. Like if I start to feel all like I might pass out, 
I just immediately sit down wherever I am, even if I'm in like the middle of the store, I'll just like squat down all of a sudden. And that seems to be the only thing that really is concerning for my baby, at least at this point, is just if I were to pass out and, you know, fall on my belly or, or something and, and fall and get hurt. So that's the only real concerning thing when it comes to having POTS and pregnancy. And I talked a little bit more, I think in my first video, about what the experts have said about um, POTS and pregnancy. So if you wanna watch that and learn more information there, I have that. But overall, it's really not, it's not dangerous to have a baby when you have POTS. It's more just your symptoms could get worse, they could get better. Some people get better, some people get worse. I feel like with my daughter's pregnancy, I got better. Like I felt like I had more energy. My blood was circulating better because I had a baby. And so the blood was coming up to the top half of my body. This one, I actually feel like I've been a little bit worse or about the same. Worse when my blood pressure gets too low, but overall just kind of the same. Like it doesn't seem to have gotten better or worse this pregnancy. So I still treat it like I do my normal POTS. All of my POTS treatments are natural. I actually have a whole video, I will link it down below, about my natural POTS treatment. And you can learn how I treat my POTS. So I just do all those things still as a pregnant woman. And it seems to help a lot, um, especially if I'm having a flare up. Speaking of flare ups, I had probably my worst flare up that I've had in almost three years during this pregnancy. And I feel like a lot of things combined against me to cause this flare up. So I wouldn't say like, oh, because I'm pregnant, I have this awful flare up. I would say more like I had a bad flare up and being pregnant maybe contributed to that. But other things that contributed to it is that we are currently in quarantine for the virus stuff going around. So if you're watching this in the future, I'm sure you remember. Um, if you're watching this in real time, you're going through it too. So we've had this big quarantine going on. So I can't really leave my house and I can't exercise. There's something that really helps my POTS. Um, Cause to me, I can't just go on a walk. That makes me feel worse, right? So I can't just go to the gym and lift weights because it's closed and I can't really get out of the house. So mentally it's like causing me extra stress. Anyways, lots of things going on. And then we also um, doubled the size of our house. We used to rent out our basement and we stopped renting out our basement recently and we've moved down there. And so I've had a lot of house projects. We've been moving our room downstairs and we have a new baby room down there and our office has moved. And so there's been a lot of organizing and cleaning and those kinds of things that I think just like all combined against me, all of those things together. And I have a toddler that I chase around. <laughs> and with my, when I was pregnant with my daughter, I didn't have any kids and she was my first baby. And so I didn't have to worry about also having energy for a toddler. So I feel like all of those things combined has made this pregnancy harder on me than my last one. So it does make me a little nervous for more kids. Like I don't know if I could handle another pregnancy, basically having two little ones running around and being pregnant with POTS, that might be a little too much for me. But I definitely think that it's doable. Like if I, if I felt that the Lord was calling me to be a mom again and to have more kids, I could do it. But I do think that each baby gets a little harder with POTS because you have to take care of the other ones that are already running around, if that makes sense. So that does feel like all those things combined caused me to have just the worst flare up and I was really, really sick. In fact, I have a whole video about it um, and you guys can go watch that. I will link it down below. Um, but yeah, it was probably one of the worst flare ups I've had in a long time. I was very, very sick, but we got through it. <laughs> but as for baby, he's perfectly healthy. There are no problems with him because of my POTS, which is super, exciting and hopeful for you. Hopefully that helps you to feel less scared about getting pregnant with POTS is it is hard for you, but it's only temporary. It's only a few months. It's only nine months. That sounds like a long time, but <laughs> now that I'm 25 weeks, it does feel like it's not that much longer till I get to meet my baby. And then my body will slowly go back to normal and um, and as normal, we know it's still super messed up because POTS and other chronic illnesses, but I definitely think that it's totally doable to 
to do this. Um, the other issue that I have with being pregnant with POTS is the heat because pregnancy <laughs> makes you hotter. Like you're just like naturally hotter. So that's something that's a lot harder. And my baby is due August 25th, like right at the end of summer, basically, which means the biggest months of my pregnancy are during the hottest months of the year. So you guys will find out in my third trimester with POTS video how that went, but oh goodness, I don't know if I'm ready for that. But anyway, right now it's May and we are getting very close to the hot months. Like it's already getting, oh, it's too hot for me to be outside after 11 a.m., right? So that's been hard. Um, that is something that I'm working on. And in fact, I have a video coming out soon of my heat intolerance kit, basically like my summer survival kit, all the things that I do to keep myself cool. So that I'm working on and I will get that out to you soon on how I'm gonna keep myself cool this summer. I've tried out a few new products and I'm hoping that they combined all together will help me to cool down this summer because Pots alone in the heat is hard, but now that I'm pregnant and it's gonna be so hard <laughs> and it already is, it's already kind of rough. So that is one big issue with being pregnant with pots is being pregnant during the summer months and not gonna be so fun. One thing that has helped me already is just wearing dresses um, because I'm giant and I can't fit into anything anyways. So I've been wearing a lot of dresses and that's helped a lot. But besides that, I'm still working on my summer kit. So I will let you know when that comes out. One other thing I wanted to mention real fast is SIBO. So a lot of people with POTS have SIBO, a small intestine bacterial overgrowth. My SIBO has slowly gotten better over my pregnancy. Same thing happened with my daughter's pregnancy. It's like every month I just feel a little bit better for my SIBO. By the end, I remember with my daughter, like I could eat almost anything and not get sick from SIBO. So I'm hoping that happens again because that was really fun. I felt like I had like a month where I could just eat anything I wanted and it was super fun. Um, but I do feel like every month it's gotten a little bit better. The first month was almost worse because I also had morning sickness, but every month since then has really gotten a little bit better. So if you're struggling with SIBO as well as part of your POTS, just know that that part does get better because you get bigger, the bloating isn't as bad because you're already huge. And then I don't know why, but my stomach hurts less when I'm pregnant. No idea why. So anyways, that has been my second trimester of pregnancy. I hope this video is helpful for you. I just want you to know that you can do it. It's not easy, as you can tell. Like, I want to be real with you. I don't wanna just say, yeah, it's perfect. You can totally do this, happy day. It's hard, it's very hard. I'm very sick all the time. I'm more sick than when I'm not pregnant. I'm more fatigued, I'm more tired. I've had more flare-ups but it's so worth it. It really is so worth it. And I just want you to know that you can do it and that you are amazing. You can be, you are a super mom. If you live with pots, you are a super mama. You can totally do this. So I hope this video was enjoyable for you. If it was, hit that like button. If you have any advice for me in my second and third trimester, leave me a comment, a comment below. Let me know what you think I should do to combat this summer heat or anything else to get me through these last few months of pregnancy. And if you are not yet subscribed to my channel, make sure you subscribe and turn on that bell notification so you don't miss a single video. I will see you guys next time.